Monday, February 24th. Monday, February 23rd, 2015, 9 a.m., Wilson County Commissioner's Court, now in session. We'll have the prayer by Monsignor Frank of the Sacred Heart Church, Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Before I begin, I was born in Poland. When I came in 86, I was in Panama Maria for eight years, then San Antonio for 18 years, now I'm in Floresville. It's an honor and privilege for me to be here today with you. Oh God, the fullness of blessing comes down from you. Do your prayers of blessing raise up. In your kindness, protect your servants who stand before you devout and faithful. Let the light of the divine wisdom direct the deliberations and decisions made for Wilson County. Grant that the hard work may help to build a better society. May they seek to preserve peace, promote national happiness, and continue to bring us the blessing of liberty and equality. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state under God, one and indivisible. For that, uh, for that floor and that 
in that room. Is, um, is that the restroom that's been boarded in forever? Yes, sir. Okay, by the door. Yes, sir. That's okay. that's the plan plan for that. So uh, also uh, there is existing uh, network availability. Uh, we, we already have cable uh, pulled to the top floor and to the uh, to the first floor. So we will be able to have <coughs> network service when we're ready to move into those facilities. We'll be using IP phones. We're still going to uh, install some uh, some net, uh, some uh, telephone cabling, probably a probably a 25 pair uh, cable to each floor, uh, so that we can install fax uh, machines and so forth as needed. How about all that wiring in the bottom floor? You you gonna reuse all that wiring from the internet or? Well, a lot of the wiring has been cut, unfortunately, so we'll have to pull new cable. I have budgeted for cable for, the uh, for that. Yes, sir. Uh, that was in uh, my uh, budget for this year. So, so we should be able to, to take care of that without any problem. And all that's going to be under inside a condo? It, it's, it's actually uh, the, the cabling uh, that is uh, the, the contractor is installing conduits. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the conduits are just going to stub out below the floor for the for the first floor, and the uh, the cable will be run in the basement. Uh, we'll suspend it with J hooks most likely. Uh, that's how we'll uh, we'll protect it from you know rodents and so forth. And uh, and then uh, the uh, the cabling on the top floor uh, will also use J hooks. In in uh, they're they're stubbing out into the attic uh, with conduits for the top floor. Are we going to have enough bandwidth for all the offices, all the people that are going to be, I guess that's right, <coughs> located? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have, a, a, we occasionally do meet our, we currently have a 10 megabit connection uh, that serves the courthouse and this facility. They're connected together with a wireless bridge right now. And uh, since the, I, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of changes as far as staff, there's just going to be some moving over to there. Uh, We'll, we'll have to do something uh, possibly in the future, though, to add more bandwidth just because of our current usage. Yes, sir. Okay. John was explaining to me he's optimistic. Everything's going forward and going to rather rapidly. Uh, are you going to be able to keep up once they start putting the offices in there by yourself? We may hire some help to pull the table. We may have to, we may have to get a, maybe a contractor or somebody come in and help pull some of that cable uh, because I also work on other county issues throughout the day uh, and, uh, and a lot of times I'm running from place to place so some of it will be after hours you know as far as cabling and so forth goes but uh, I, I, I do anticipate I'll probably have to to get a little bit of help when we get ready for that project. Okay. I've got a question maybe John can answer it up on the electrical uh, I know that there's a lot of wiring underneath that. I mean, it's just old, old match or whatever it is. I don't know if y'all got somebody to do it. We've got our electrician looking at it already. It's not just underneath, it's up. It's, it's all, all your wiring there. Um, by codes now, we can't, the Romex is going to have to come out. Yeah. And so my electrician is looking at it already. Oh, okay, so that way they can do a surprise on how much it's. Yes, sir. And I think that would be a good idea, putting everything you know. At, <coughs> at this point, sir, you don't have a choice. Yeah, yes. I know. I, I, don't, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. We're planning on about 154 drops uh, total this phase of the construction. We probably won't install them all right away. Uh, Where main, main goal is to get the offices up that are going to be moving, and uh, and and just get those uh, personnel functional. Uh, so that's what we're going to concentrate on. But uh, eventually, we want to have uh, things put in place to have uh, uh, you know some video cam uh, surveillance cameras around the perimeter of the building as well. So uh, we're planning on probably needing to put about uh, 17 17 cameras up. That would be uh, 10 exterior cameras and seven interior cameras around the hallways and so forth. Thank you. Thank yes, sir. Thank you, yes, sir. Is the April deadline still in effect? We're still shooting for that, and I'll know a lot more once I find out a couple of other things, but that's what I'm still shooting for. That's very optimistic. 
<laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Randy Jeffrey, Stone Graves Architect. So we're uh, for Lindsay Thorne. Uh, we got to the point now where uh, we're ready to start selecting some colors for for the actual historic courthouse. Uh, John managed to get, uh, paint a couple uh, of, the, uh, of exhibits over at the courthouse. If you all want to go over and look, he's got some photos on his. Uh, Camera. I don't know how good that'll be, but uh, I recommend if you all have time to go over and take a look and then select which one you want, and we can go ahead and order and proceed with uh, begin with the painting on the inside. Not just the, the interior only inside. Or, yes, sir. The exterior is the the plaster itself is complete now, as of Saturday, okay. with the exception of the bands that go white. Um, all the upper trim is that's all finished out. Okay. Um, with that, with the exception here again of the steeple area, and uh, the, the interior samples are located where. When you come in the first room to the right. Coming in off of. Uh, off Third Street. Okay. We're planning on going down there after commissioner's call okay. and looking at them. Sounds uh, good. Nancy called earlier, okay. and he said that you would be here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, number six, which no Jackson County judge discussed <coughs> take action and change it to the insurance committee participants, adding two positions, one county attorney or his or her designated alternate, and two human resources and his or her designated alternate. Okay, uh, the insurance uh, committee <coughs> has, the, some people are gone. And we do not have anybody from the county attorney's office, and now that we have a human resources department, we have nobody on from that. And that was a so we're going to have to replace at least two people. Uh, my recollection, Judge, is that the participants were myself, <coughs> Commissioner File, um, Don from your office, uh, the county treasurer. Um, someone from the sheriff's department. Thomas, Silver. Thomas, that's right. I think that was it, wasn't it? That was it. Yeah, that was it. And so are we deleting? Not deleting anybody, this would be an addition. Okay. Uh, and the reason that we have somebody from the county attorney's office, and then since we have a human resources department, have somebody there from the human resources department. That sounds good to me. Judge, can I have a motion to that? Motion by Commissioner Body, second by Commissioner Rallis. All in favor? Aye. All any opposed? Okay. And, and for the human resource, this is also to put another committee or or you got it under another one? The human resources? It would be Vicky. Oh, okay, it says right here for the handbook committee. That's, that's, that's the handbook, handbook committee, yes. That's another one later on. Okay. In, okay. Uh, number seven, Tom Dubnik, County Auditor, open bids. Consider an action on proposals for A, material, B, hauling, C, material cost hauling, and D, fuel. And the comment below that, we will not go into executive session. Everything will be done at open court. Judge, do you want to do it now or do you want to wait for the end of the meeting since it's going to be time to say Go further and come back to number seven. That be the last item. Okay. And we're going to go to eight. Okay. Fifty four library. Discuss take action on the memorandum of understanding M O U L between the Wilson County Library and Maker Education Initiative. The M O U L M O U will accept a mini grant for seven thousand dollars to host Maker's full camp during the months of June and July 2015. This man. Okay, when I was here uh, two weeks ago, um, while well, they had the plan for the summer, one of them was to create a Maker's Core or a Maker's Space in Stockdale. This grant would um, help fund that activity. So what I did with the sheet that I gave you, I did my usual, this is what, on one side of the page is what they expect from us, the other side is what they're promising us. So they're prom promising, $7,000 is part of the summer reading program. <clears throat> Included in that grant is they're going to waive the fee for two what they call possibility boxes. And within those possibility boxes, they give us the tools to create the makerspace activities for uh, youth and their, and their families to attend. 
Um, there's other guidelines that we are required to hire two summer hires from that $7,000. And we also had to put together a quick budget of how we would be expected to spend that $7,000. And it would also include transportation for our IT coordinator to go to Stockdale four days a week. And I need a signature from the legal entity representing the library and leave that issue, Judge. Oh, so Do does $7,000 original... $7, cover all of that? Yes. Two part-times and the whole bit? Mm -hmm. You said you created your budget? That was a little mini budget that we threw together. It was the salaries for okay, two hires okay. um, for eight weeks, the transportation, and I believe there was $700 left over from that to buy supplies for the maker's fairs. So you recommended that we pay them $14 to $16 per hour? That's what the Maker Corps people are recommending. But it's it's totally up to us. But the, I figured in $15 an hour for two summer hires at 20 hours a week for eight weeks. Are these college students? Are 15, or are they? 15 hours each for each person. Nothing that but dollars. $15 for an hour for, for, for two summer hires. Are they no, or college students or are they anybody we want? But it cannot be library employees. It has to be a new hire. Okay, and then this still will allow us, there will be $700 surplus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you're right now, we're paying, what, $8 on part timers? Mm -hmm. How's that going to fit with our current staff? Do we have to pay the 15 or can we pay what we're paying? We can pay what we want, but I followed their suggestions to do the budget. Uh, I'd rather pay them what we're paying right now instead of going to that fourteen, sixteen dollars. Yeah, that, that, that would be a mistake, from, that would be a mistake. From, from the standpoint of the morale of yes. the other folks that right. in the only, eight dollar range. The only drawback is is they are grant funded. So once the summer's over, they are no longer employed. We still, I uh, mean, we still pay the part time with that amount of money. Okay, I, we can do that. I mean, we may have to pay them a little more, but I'm just thinking long term, mm -hmm. the morale of your group, because you've got you've got a good group now. I, I wouldn't want to mess that up. Okay, we. I'll be and back God back. knows they'll be aware that the other people are right. making. Judge, I have the supplies. original of the contract. <coughs> okay. Sure. It's only eight pages. Just read it all. Good. <laughs> It has been run through the, uh, off the county attorney's office. Okay. And if what I'm looking for here is for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the It doesn't approach the, the no, wages the, in here? No, the salaries. It just says it runs the bank. Right. The salaries was a, a discussion that we had via email when they sent us the they even sent us like a template of the uh, job descriptions and what we should put in the newspaper to advertise, and I just took it from there. But I would rather follow county policy than what they're offering. Okay. And we've had a recommendation of $8 an hour? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, another question. Okay, say we pay, that's going to be probably approximately 50% of what the wages were going to be. Okay, you're going to have a lot bigger surplus than $700. You got plans for that now? We will need it for the supplies. Because okay. the libraries, the summer reading program is going to pick up the excess. Okay. And that, that budget comes from the friends of the library. And will you be able to hire somebody for $8 an hour to work part time for eight weeks? I hope so. We just listed our own part time position that we had open, and I had 20 applicants that were willing to work. So we could either pull from that or go out and hire, put it run, run the ad again. Judge, I, my feeling would be that we, that we state that our preference is that she pay $8 an hour, but that you give her a little room to operate within that because it may be that for that shorter period of time you may not be able to find someone at that rate. Not necessarily, you know, fifteen dollars an hour or whatever the upper upper limit was. But I think it yeah, that, if she uh, came, Nick, Nick, Nikki needs a little bit of room to play with. If she can't find someone more body, I mean uh, she can always contact one of us and say, well we can't hire nobody and we need to go a little bit higher than that. Okay. But I'll, st I'll start with the eight. 
some form of a motion there? Motion and it's going to be to pay $8 an hour. I recommend that you recommend $8 an hour, hour. An hour or, no. or what it will take. Okay, for the second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Wally, second by Commissioner Thomas. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? County Judge discussed the action on changes to the handbook committee participants. Okay, same thing has happened on the handbook committee. Uh, we have the county attorney, Russell Wilson, is no longer with us. He's now the district judge. Uh, Ginger Felix is assistant auditor, no longer with us. And then the personnel director, Elaine Tackett, uh, who is no longer with us. Okay. I was going to try to do the same thing we've done on the insurance committee to include the county attorney, his or her designated alternate, and the human resources uh, person, and his or her designated alternate. Are you still keeping the assistant auditors? Yeah, no, we have no assistant. But the ginger Felix is not here. That's the same name. Do we want to add? No, uh, that's why I'm asking. Okay. We want to add uh, county auditor and his or her designated.
<laughs> Are people coming to see y'all over there? Mm -hmm. The review committee. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Number 11, Edwin Baker, Health and Public Safety. A, review, discuss, and take action on Southern Springs volunteer fire department coverage. Last summer I was approached, I can't tell the rest of them in on that don't know, I was approached by the ESD board from ESD1 to talk to the Southern Springs Volunteer Fire Department Chief and President to find out why they hadn't been making any calls. So we arranged a meeting, Commissioner Morales was there, myself, uh, the Laverne Fire Chief, the Southern Springs Fire Chief and their President, and we discussed and talked about issues they were having and it came down to manpower issues, pretty much everything that everybody's suffering from on the volunteer side. Uh, just that their manpower issues had dwindled down to nobody was showing up. And uh, so, you know, we asked them if they could go ahead and start trying to make some type of efforts to at least try to rectify it. You know, because whenever, whenever a department doesn't respond to their fires, <coughs> the other fire departments have to fill in. That, that was last summer. Uh, right before Christmas, I had uh, been in contact with the ESD board president, and we had been discussing it. And you know, the contracts coming up with the with the volunteer fire department, EMSs, ESDs, and he said, "I really would like to have another meeting." And so we arranged another meeting. Uh, Commissioner Morales, Commissioner Wiley, and myself, the city manager from Stockdale, and ESD board president. ESD one board president. And the reason Stockdale was involved is because we cover the other half whenever they don't show up. And the city is, is it's a city owned department. So more or less the people who had financial ties to what was going on plus, you know, the commissioners. I, that was, it wasn't about the fire departments themselves, it was more or less the money side of it. Uh, we talked, discussed, had several points of conversation and, and we talked about how to go about doing it and since then we've done some research uh, along with the ESD board president, myself, uh, Catherine, uh, Ricky's been involved, I've kept Larry and the judge up on it, but more or less I talked to Mike Habit, who is their president uh, earlier this week or last week and said we need to meet Friday or Sunday, you know, before this comes up so I can take something to commissioner's court from your side if y'all can't be there. He sent me a text late last night and said, can't meet, uh, have uh, personal challenges, and we just need to put all this off. Well, I'm not going to call the ESD board president and say we're going to put it off another six months. You know, uh, they have not responded to a call since May is what I understand at all. And Stockdale and Laverne, you have been caught with going to most fire calls go out between 11 in the morning and 6 in the evening, and then it tapers down after that. And they also go out on weekends, and they haven't even been responding on weekends. Uh, so, you know, we don't, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I got the answers for what we need to do, but uh, at some point, because the next agenda item is offering contracts to all of them, all the, you know, all the, Fire Department, CMS, and ESDs, depending on which one falls under. And uh, the, you know, more or less the City of Stockdale and the ESD Board presidents say, we don't want our departments covering that area, but if they're going to have to cover it anyway, we need to do something on the financial side. And that's kind of where it's sitting right now. Uh, you know, I was kind of hoping they would step up and have that meeting and, and let me know. I have not heard from or talked to the Chief eight months. He doesn't return phone calls. He hasn't responded to any, any emails. Uh, and most of that's because I was told he was working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Is that what he told you? Ricky has had some contact with him. <coughs> I've tried to get him to help out on weekends with some of the stuff that goes on over there. Instead, Stockdale on Laverne, has to go over like a Hammerfest run. Uh, we have to go over there and help out with traffic control and things because they're, they're not unable to do any of that. And, you know, uh, we've also done some research on their incorporation, how those kind of departments are formed and their letters of incorporation and stuff. And I, I have uh, sent that over to Catherine. And uh, 
we haven't really had a chance to sit down and talk about it, but I don't think she is real pleased with the way it reads. Well, but I'm not going to speak sorry, for you. The Southern Springs. Springs, yes, ma'am. Well, I guess my, let me just say my first concern is that if you look up something on the Springs Fire Department on the Texas Secretary of State's website, uh, they are no longer called that. They are now called the Sutherland Springs Community Association, Inc. And what they're supposed to do has been changed. I mean, it may be all the same people. I don't know the people. But at the very least, if we're going to contract with them, we need to contract with a real entity and not an old Entity. Um, right. Who sent you that that old? The EFP board president did. What what I recall from the conversation we had, uh, I think it was Thursday a week before last, is that since May there was something like 41 times that the Southern <coughs> Springs Fire Department was called out, requested, yeah. and. They haven't responded to any of them, um, and there may have been additional ones. I think there were 41. Uh, George Jones indicated or suggested that they had responded to. His concern is that um, their legal counsel has advised them that, from the standpoint of being an ESD, that they could be. Um, sort of out of line by going so many times outside of their ESD area that, that they were put together to cover. Um, and my feeling is that um, we don't fund the Sutherland Springs Fire Department. They're not doing their job. Um, that we hold that money <coughs> and make a decision that perhaps that we use that money, and I don't know that we can fund the ESD, but either to fund the Lavernia Fire Department and the Stockdale Fire Department who are having to make those calls. Um, but that we not fund the Sutherland Springs Fire Department because the, essentially they're not there. Either they're, they're not there. Okay. And, and, we, and we've got a pretty big coverage area that yeah. It has to be handled by somebody. Here's a here's a question. Here's something. Okay, if they're going to try to restructure and we don't fund them, they're not going to restructure. That's I mean, this is it. This That's is it. this is a decision. That they're either right. going to try to go forward or not at all. Well, all indications that I've seen from the conversations that and, and you chime in is that there are no efforts. Okay. The only ones that have been in contact with. That's what, what do you think, Ricky? In that, I mean, I, I know I live there. They, they haven't showed up in a year almost. And I've heard calls, you know, at night. I got a scanner. They don't make calls. They're never there for anything. No event. On the other deal, when we start funding the other fire department, we're going to have to draw a line on what the is going to cover and stuff going to cover. Well, that's probably further down the road because we got equipment issues to discuss and things like that. I mean, there's a lot of things to discuss. The uh, main priority today is find out do I offer them a contract or not? And uh, do y'all do y'all want me to offer them a contract or not? And if not, then that, that's off the table. Then we can start moving forward with the other, the other decisions that need to be made. Uh, but right now, you know, it, it, it's similar to what Commissioner Wiley has said, you know, we, I told Southern Springs back at our meeting in the summer that if they get with me, we'd get with the newspaper and, you know, kind of put out something to say, hey, we need more volunteers. But, you know, that's kind of a secondary issue now because we go into the letters of incorporation and start finding, or, is that what that's called, Kevin? Yes. And we're finding out that they're not even incorporated anymore. So technically, that's kind of off the table. You can't give them a contract. Well, and if community center is, uh, well, I guess you could, but it's going to be right. The community center is not a fire fighting agency. Why would we give it to them? What is the name of that other? Uh, Sutherland Springs Community Association. In uh, 2010, they, had, they put in for the same thing, except for it said volunteer fire department on the end. 
And then the last one in 2014 just says what she yeah, just said. They went into the uh, and did a new name with the uh, Secretary of State's office and took out the volunteer fire department. And it's now just Sutherland Springs Community Association Inc. Um, Tambria Reed. Tambria Reed. Yeah. Tamara, yeah. Uh, is the registered agent, and the list of things that they're going to do, at least my reading of it, doesn't include firefighting unless, doesn't include firefighting. Is that a description of what they do or a bylaws or whatever? They're articles of incorporation. Articles of incorporation and it does not include firefighting. Um, no, unless you could somehow fit it into humanitarian efforts or something like that, but to promote historical value of Sutherland Springs recreational facilities. That sounds like that's a totally a different group. group. That, yes. yeah, that's a totally separate group. Yes. Mm -hmm. That has to do probably with the historical society. But, yeah. but what I'm saying though, when they file with the Secretary of State, they, they said we are replacing, huh. and deal. we are replacing <laughs> the Sutherland Springs Volunteer Fire Department, and they kept the same charter number. The, the problem with the Sutherland Springs Fire Department is, well, there's a number, but it's obviously leadership. You have the chief mm -hmm. who's working seven days a week. Well, you have the president here? of the association who has health issues and lives, <coughs> and lives in Floresville and therefore can't be a part of it. Um, and when they were able to help, I, they were there. Yeah, they, they, they were there every time and you, you could count on them, but it's just, it, you know, today's time to kind of overwhelm them as well as some of us are more fortunate to have our numbers from 25 dwindled down to 18 or 17 versus when you got 10 and they would go down to none or two where you at. And uh, another deal before we make a uh, decision on that, uh, I know that the county has, they have requested for a grant for a truck. Now that debt, I don't know if they're still in debt with that one or what? It's paid off. No, it's paid off as far as I know. Yeah. It's all paid off. Yeah, just that one truck. Okay. You're talking about the one that the, the one they did the grant on that grant truck. That's one of the, the hurdles that we need to that after we decide where we're going, the court decides where it's going to go. We can start working those issues out and make some determinations on how we're going to do. Because yeah. uh, we'll that truck is going to be long to hold. Well, that's something that will have to be decided. Because I know that the county went out for that grant. And and I got uh, there's several options and I you know that we can do on that and. Uh, that has been in whenever me as the fire chief talks to Jason Shield, the fire chief in Laverne as a fire chief, we discuss leaving that truck there if it stays, but we, you know, there's stumbling blocks. Who's gonna insure it? Who's gonna do right. maintenance on it? Who's gonna do all that? So we gotta work through all that and come up with some options to, to bring before y'all. Okay, Judge, my suggestion again is that we set Lavernia aside. The, the second part is that we have other ones that the other group that we need to fund, and that's the second part of this. And our local agreements with yes. our departments right. that that we set it aside with the understanding that um, we'll come back and revisit that. That we're either um, and, and I, when I say set it aside, I don't mean a long term set aside, not Thanks. six months. That, that we set it aside that perhaps you talk to um, Abbott mm -hmm. and tell him that the court set it aside and that next commissioner's court we're going to revisit it okay. and if we have not come to a resolution of that then we're going to take a look at what it is that we're going to do in the absence of that department. Well in the meantime, uh, do you want to get the ball rolling on those other options, like I was strong. What are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with that? Yeah, I'll go start. Well, I think I yeah, I think yeah. I'll start looking at it. Absolutely. I, it, it, I don't see anything that indicates that by the time we get around to next commissioner's court, which I think is the ninth of next month, that anything will have changed. Right. And so I think you have to operate under that assumption, unless Abbott steps forward and they have some real alternatives. To We've been about two hours on the phone the other night. And you know, he was, he, agreed. Mm -hmm. he was, uh, under, he understood what was going on and why, you know, and uh, 
he, you know, he more or less said, I, I can't guarantee I could ever come again to another fire. Yeah. But then again, I'm not saying I won't either. Because we've got to get it rolling because of, you know, summer's just around the corner and it's going to start getting dry out. There was a fire Friday and they jumped an eight-foot rope. Yeah, I know. Okay, Judge, I have a question. If we fund it and they don't respond, is there any recourse back to the county? Or well, we're not going to fund it. No, no I'm saying if we were to fund okay. it. Because Pretty much you have to go to the next order, year. Then all that, 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 that money will be gone. Okay, well, yes. A, then review, discuss, take action on those things. Uh, volunteer fire board coverage. We want to table that. To make the next commissioner for me. Yes. Motion. Motion by Commissioner Gunn, second by Commissioner Morales. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. A will be tabled until the commissioner's report meeting. March the 9th. March the 9th. Okay. Okay. Now, B. Review, discuss, and take action on interlocal agreements with volunteer fire departments, emergency medical service providers, and emergency <coughs> service districts. That is correct, yeah. Okay, uh, now this, we're going to leave out Sutherland Springs. In that. Yeah, that's my understanding, yeah. yes, sir. Okay. Do uh, you have any comments on that? Well, uh, <laughs> Catherine's done a lot of research on this and jumped back and forth, and we've been in, in conversation probably for a year on these. Uh, I sent them to them earlier in the last year first this year whatever and uh, there was some things we some questions she needed answered before the contracts went out and uh, and then when we finally I think all the answers I think you were satisfied on the answers and Daniel was satisfied on uh, the county attorney was satisfied on the answers and we had to put it on commission report you know for y'all to approve so Dana says this is a or, excuse me the county attorney says this is a contract between the county and another agency so y'all need to approve them you're talking about ESDs? All of them. Yeah. Oh, what kind of contract you're talking about? The, the same ones we've always done. That always the way you tell the court what they are. Right? Well, it's the, uh, oh, the, okay. <laughs> because this does get confusing, bear with me a minute. Uh, ESD number one, of course, is a fire only ESD, and that they contract with the Laverne Volunteer Fire Department, and that is their coverage area also. Uh, ESD number three is an EMS only as of January 1 of this year, uh, ESD, which is the, which was the Stockdale EMS, is now ESD number three EMS, and they cover the area of ESD number three. The rest are uh, your volunteer fire, well, let me go into ESD number two real quick. ESD number two is the Eagle Creek area, and uh, they do fire and EMS, but only within their ESD coverage, because we do have we, the county does contract with Eagle Creek EMS to cover outside of that. Right. We we give the contracts to fire and EMS versus the ESD at the ESD's request. I have the email that they sent me requesting that we contract with Laverne uh, with uh, Eagle Creek Fire and Eagle Creek EMS, not the ESD. With the, with the volunteers. That's right. That is correct. And, uh, and then the rest of them are, you know, uh, Stockdale, Stockdale, Fire Department, Floresville, Pope, uh, we're leaving out some yes. Springs, Three Oaks, uh, and Kanata Verde. Yeah. And then, of course, the other three, other two EMSs, which is Laverne EMS and Wilson County EMS, which is Floresville's area. The, the, the reason that we um, gave the money to the ESDs begin with had to do with ESD number one coming and requesting that. Uh, from the standpoint of accountability, uh, ESDs provide a full audited report so you know where your money went. With the volunteer fire departments, it's not has not been, for the most part, accounted for quite as well. Uh, and and that was that was the reason we went to the ESDs. I have uh But it's only what one EFD that we give money to or no it's two. One yeah, one. It, it'd be ESD <laughs> number one and ESD number three. One's a fire and one's one an EMS. One from yeah. Stockdale, one for the Vernon. That's correct. The, but the the ESD number three, there is no other agency to give they don't contract with an agency. Right. They used to, but they don't anymore. Whereas ESD number one actually contracts with the Vernon Fire to provide the service. Yeah, but we want to stay with that. Okay. 
So, but ESD number two? They request that we send it to, to the Eagle Creek Eagle Volunteer Eagle. Fire and EMS. Yeah. Okay. They request that. But I, I, you know, I was real specific with uh, with uh, the the chief over there at Eagle Creek and told them, you know, until I get a letter or something from them, I'm contracting with the ESDs, and I got uh, an email from them saying that's what they want to do. But it's also, I mean, uh, it's not really up to the ESD if we want to fund the ESD. Because it's up to commission and That is correct. It's, it's that up is to correct. And support who we want to fund. You are correct. That. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, yes, uh, we, there were some issues or questions I think brought up early on. And if you want to kind of fill them in on that on the ESDs and contract with the county. It's resolved now that okay. we can, okay. uh, if it's to benefit citizens of the county who are not covered in uh, incorporated uh, cities, then we can assist the ESDs with money. Right. Five fires off the and found a services. 25 year old attorney general's opinion. Well, we had asked for their opinion uh, a couple of years ago on that AG about the ESD. And we went to that meeting also mm -hmm. where he said we can fund mm -hmm. ESD. But it's nice to see it. Right, it's mm -hmm. nice to yeah. see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, the, the amounts that each agency will be funded is what was approved in the budget. The uh, checks will be written as approved in the budget. From for this year, and uh, Catherine and Tom and I have a lot of cleanup to do now next year. Okay. So it's going to be an ex excluding Sutherland Springs. Excluding right. Sutherland Springs. Okay, you come back in. And that will be however you all make the motion. Okay. Your motion. Waiting. Um, I make a motion that we fund, uh, as it says here. Uh, the interlocal agreements with the volunteer fire departments, emergency medical services providers, EMSs, and emergency service districts in Wilson County, with the exception of Sutherland Springs Volunteer Fire Department, that that be set aside um, until uh, we're able to determine if they are going to reorganize, and if not, what we do with those funds to make certain that citizens that area are covered. Okay. So that's so a motion. That motion. Yeah. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Wiley, second by Commissioner Gomez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. That passes. Now I have copies if y'all want to look through on the different five different contracts. Uh, just say one moment. Look them later. Uh, there is a mutual aid agreement they also have to agree to in there. That's in there. Uh, so yeah, and uh, we'll get with you also the next time on that. Uh, on the insurance deal for the, uh, all the vehicles, and I think it says on the contract. Which one? Yes, the vehicles. But which is which? which fire department. Fire. Yes. All yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Was we supposed to bring they got it Catherine? Are we supposed okay. to talk about what was in the EMS contract that they must make? The mm -hmm. about the EMS insurance because that's not in the contract. Have you, yeah, I don't know. How did y'all resolve that? Y'all are aware of that, right? Yeah, but it's on that contract where yeah, they, they're the contract. supposed to look for insurance to for their vehicles. Provide provide provide. Provide. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It stays like that. I, I want to notify them. That's <laughs> where I, I talked to some of them and I told them that this year has been funded for. Okay. But next, okay. next year, they that's, got a whole year. That's so what they, I want to clarify. So they can start looking for their own insurance. So next year, this year we're done, yeah. but next year, okay, got you. Oh. I didn't want to start any rumors. I will need a copy of the original almost contract. Yeah, I got a copy of this one. Okay. Yeah. 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 And the amended finance report for December, I guess that's not there also, so we'll skip that. And then 13, Jan Hall County Trade for payroll and personal expenses. Do you have those? Yes, sir. They'll be given by Tom Business County Auditor. Okay, new employees. Kelly P. Simmons began working for the library on February 13, 2015, making $8 per hour. Daryl W. Collins, Jr. will begin work as a correction officer on February the 16th making $2,500 per month. Status changes. Victoria Miller became Wilson County Human Resource Director effective February 9, 2015. Reservations. 
terminations. Cynthia Hinojosa submitted a resignation that will become effective February 27, 2015. Retirements. That's okay. Annie D. Gonzalez, retirement becomes effective on February 27, 2015. Well, we, we, don't, we can't do that until she okay. submits something. She has a okay. Why did they give it to you? Did she submit something to Human Resources? Done. Okay. No. I talked to her a while ago. She was in the process of okay. typing a little scratch that. Okay. And also, that this is not the correct title for um, Victoria Mills. I didn't have this up. This says Human Resources Director, but when you that human was created, specialist. yes, it's human resources specialist. 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 Okay, so change from human resource director to human resource specialist. Yes, and that's all the changes. So you don't need to go on. Okay. Can I have them? Yes, ma'am. We'll just take that bottom one off and check yes. the yes. appropriate. Yes. 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 Thank yes. you. Yes. 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 All here. Yes. Human resource director. Yes. 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 I don't know how to spell it. Okay. What <laughs> special? So you just put special. Specialist. Yes. <laughs> Can I do special? Okay. Thank you. Because uh, we can go ahead and do the. Does she want to go back to seven? Yeah, that bills. Bills. Oh, we can do bills now. Okay. The bills, Tom Dubin, County Auditor. Mm -hmm.